So this is a brand new award, and this is actually focusing on the work that we do at the British Library. So this is going to be a real insight to the incredible range of digital projects that we get involved in. So I'd like to invite Phil Spence, who's the Chief Operating Officer at the British Library, who's going to talk about the awards and announce the um, special mentions, runners-up and winners. Hello, everybody. Mahendra, thank you for uh, inviting me to do this. It's, it's a great honour. Um, I set up the Digital Scholarship um, Department with Adam Farquhar Adam, six years ago. So, hmm, we didn't know exactly where it was going, but I think uh, from the testimony today, the things are, are pretty healthy in the, in the world of digital scholarship. So um, I have 11 uh, shortlisted um, individuals and teams who have shown an outstanding contribution towards, um, as Adam would say, uh, capitalising on the affordances of digital content. So, um, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, so, it, it's, it's very satisfying, I think, that I'm the least digitally savvy person in the room as well to be introducing uh, the, the awards. Um, so, I think the first one um, is the digital scholarship team themselves, um, who have, have made really great strides over the last few years and uh, in, in all the things that they do. And I won't, I won't mention them all um, by name, given the time. Um, the next is uh, short listed is Ava Del Rey and Andrew Pearson, who have been working with Alex Kolkowski um, to work on uh, the, the film and improving it for the work that, uh, that he has been doing. Um, he's our sound artist at the moment. The next is our digital preservation team, who have been developing a laboratory to look at how they can. Um, preserve various media, uh, digital content, um, going back uh, in history, I suppose, CDs, floppy disks, cartridges, and so on. The next is um, Adi Keenan-Schubert, who has been working on um, quite an innovative project, looking at how we do 3D modeling of some of our um, content, notably our Chinese oracle bones, um, which I think are the oldest items in our collection. Next is Ian Cook, who has been developing a, a MOOC, a mobile, um, I mean, a, a major online course with Nottingham University, the world's greatest university. <laughs> if there's anyone here from Nottingham, that's where I am. Um, so Ian, Ian worked on that, and I do know a bit about that, that particular one because that's come to our leadership team. Um, next is Phil Hatfield, um, Know Your Place, West of England, who's been working with South Gloucestershire Council um, using our collections been looking at geo-referencing mapping, and if you need to know anything more about that, I think Phil should be here somewhere. Um, you can ask him later. Next is Alex Haley and Antonia Moon. They have been working um, with handwritten text, handwriting text recognition systems um, to, to help convert some of our card catalogues from the, from the East India Office uh, collections. Next is uh, Lib Crowds. This is a crowdsourcing project uh, undertaken by um, Alexander Mendes, Kate Eagleton, and Nora McGregor. Um, the idea behind that is that they, they can furnish and improve the, uh, the amount of uh, catalogue information um, in, um, from different parts of the world, mostly from our uh, Asian collections. Jeremy Nagel, on behalf of the science reference team, and Margaret Makepeace, um, have been working um, on, on posters which better illustrate um, World War I, and that's, I think that's been part of our um, Twitter account, and, and these, these uh, show some uh, images shown related to uh, Battle of the Somme. Next the, um, is um, the team who've been working on the Qatar National uh, Digital Library. And what they've been doing here is, is working on metrics in order to actually look at the throughput of the Im images that have been uh, created for that project. And they are, that's Satorius Alpinis, Tahima Yasmin, Nadir Akhtar, and Joe Harrop. And I've seen that firsthand. It's extremely impressive. Um, next is Andy Jackson and Jill Hogarth, and the former um, members of the web archiving team who've been working on Shine 2, which is a historical search engine. Um, which I think allows you to look at web archives and um, informs you of uh, lots of trends 
um, of different bits of information, and quite frankly, it's beyond me, but I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and I've seen it as well. <laughs> anyway, it's another matter. Um, next is Heather Rosie, who um, has been using our ethos system, which uh, we, we heard a, an example of earlier, and she's been looking at uh, Alzheimer's and, and looking at research trends and actually found some interesting um, statistics uh, about how research is, is probably um, not moving at, uh, the, at the pace or the investment um, that, that, say, cancer oncology research is doing. So um, there's some interesting uh, findings from that piece of work. Next is uh, TEI Catalog uh, Records Viewer, from, again from Alex Mendez, and this is a, a project to be able to export in a, export in a very user-friendly way um, information from our catalog. Next is our reading room managers, uh, led by Lethia Lee, and it's, it's their job to actually implement some of the digital advances here at the library, and they do a fantastic job. And I should definitely give them a plug because they're the unsung heroes of the library. I'm sure if, if you come into the reading rooms here, you'll know that. So, I've got to be careful how fast I press the buttons here. The, this, the jury's special mention is A.D. Kane and Schubert for the 3D modelling of the Chinese oracle bones. So, well done. <laughs> Next, we have Shine 2. <laughs> Firstly, crucially, it's, uh, I want to thank the team members, um, Gil, who can't be here today, and uh, also um, a Peter Webster, who did much of the work uh, directly with the historians, helping facilitate what they needed, and, of course, Helen Hoxhew, who's... Uh, uh, led the team at the time and who made sure the project happened and that made sure I did things when I was supposed to. Uh, I'd also like to thank um, Professor Jane Winters, I think, is here, uh, who led the original AHRC project, which funded the development of this and assembled the group of historians that drove this project forward. Um, I just want to say briefly uh, a lot of parallels with the keynote from Melissa this morning. Um, uh, the main goal was finding needles in haystacks, original resources for close reading, but our problem was the haystack was 3.5 billion items big, and we're a small team. <laughs> I made Gil read them at first, no. Uh, <laughs> and so um, finding ways through that, uh, it is a historical search engine, but crucially, historians don't want Google. They don't want the black box to give them the one hit. They want to understand what's going on. It has to be transparent, trustworthy. And so it, it lent into a model where you slice and dice the data set up based on facts and information within the data set and take the data home with you for deeper analysis. Again, much like this morning's presentation. So I'd just like to say one thing I think we've learned from it is uh, we've managed to make uh, something I'm very proud of, and it's all built on very good open source tools. And the advantage of these is uh, different research organizations like ours can share knowledge and, uh, about them and, and, and use them, but also we can share our tools with our researchers. And that gives us a very strong basis on which to produce research and services um, suitable for a, a digital library uh, at this time. So, thank you very much. Well done, Andy. I think it's much clearer now. <laughs> and, and the winner is um, LibCrowds. Okay, very good. Nora's going to come up, um, I think, to accept the award. Yeah, so this is really um, Alex Mendez. This is his baby, so I'm sad he's, he can't be here today. He's a little under the weather. Um, but I accept on his behalf. Um, so I'll give you just a quick little background as to what this thing is, and I hope that you're looking it up right now on your phones. <laughs> Libcrowds.com. 
Um, so this is a beautiful picture that strikes fear in the heart of any librarian in the modern time. Because <laughs> this is a card catalog, and it looks beautiful, but it's um, representative of a lot of our, a huge amount of our collections at the British Library are only accessible by coming to the reading room and picking out that card and finding the book in the library. So you might be shocked to discover that a huge amount of our collections are not discoverable in explore at bl.com. Co.uk. Anyway, <laughs> bl.uk, sorry. Uh, anyway, so this is a huge problem. And um, for example, our Chinese collections, there's at least 50,000 um, titles that are in the collection that are only um, discoverable by coming to the library. And that's just one part of our collection. So it's 50,000 books that you guys didn't know we had. Um, so uh, all good ideas, of course, start on um, a piece of um, paper. <laughs> and so this was our sketch um, by uh, Catherine Eagleton, who's head of Asia African Collections. And um, what we were trying to get at here was a way to um, find out if the books that are cataloged in our collection on those paper cards might already have an existing electronic record somewhere else that we could just steal and slap our own shelf mark on top of. And there you go, we have our own um, digital record for it. And uh, luckily, um, since 1960, there's an or organization that does cooperative cataloging called OCLC. It's an international um, consortium of libraries around the world. And so when a book is published, the catalog card or a, a catalog record is created and it's in this database. And so um, the wonderful Alex Mendez did um, a bit of a lookup that um, through the LibCrowd system would do a query of that database to see um, if we could match those records. So that's what LibCrowds is. And it was um, actually born out of the, the kind of share culture that we're, we're in now. So you heard a lot about how we're, we're sharing our collections um, as freely as we can through the Flickr um, uh, Flickr 1 million that we put up, but also we're <laughs> using um, open source frameworks as well. So Pybasa was created um, as a uh, crowdsourcing platform for anyone to use, and the code is uh, open source, and SciFabric is the organization that came up with it. And we heard from our friends over at British Museum the success stories that they had in using Pybasa and implementing it for their project Micropass, which you can look up later after you've done LibCraft. <laughs> Um, so we knew that it was, it was a viable platform and that it would work. And so Alex um, took that code, and again, it's Pybasa, and, um, and made it work for our own, um, customized it for our own ends. And so um, we had an average success rate. So just to go back really quick. Um, so you look at the title. We scanned those cards that are in the card catalogs. 50,000 of them, and you don't even need to know the language. It's really just essentially pattern matching. You're just matching what you see on the card and doing a search, and it's searching on um, OCLC for one to see if there's a match. And so we've had 75% success in two or more people coming up saying that they've seen the same record. And um, in the first six months, we got um, six projects were completed, and we got 5,000 new records into here. So we've we've tested the the theory and it works so um, yeah so and now we have an award for it so let's start <laughs> and that's it I think okay. <laughs>